In this project, we want to look at how to use a data grid view to display the information contained in an array or eventually we use it another data source such as a database. And I've created a data file for the Country Music Association Awards. And the first row of that data file shows the, the column header. So year, entertainer of the year, male vocalist of the year, female vocalist of the year, and the Horizon Award or New Artist of the Year Award. But I want to point something out about this data file, and that is I didn't use commas, which is very common to separate the information as far as the different columns or fields, or tabs, which is probably the second most common way of doing it. Sometimes you might have data that will contain a comma or a tab. And so you can use other characters. So I just used the vertical bar. I knew that none of my data would have the vertical bar in it. And the vertical bar, of course, is a shift backslash on the keyboard. We could also use any special characters um, out of the multitude of characters we have available in fonts these days. So I'm going to split my data when I bring it in to read it on these vertical bars. So the first line's a header, and then I have lines of data for each year starting in 1967. Again, the year, entertainer, male vocalist, female vocalist, and the Horizon Award. The Horizon Award didn't start until much later, like, uh, like 1981 or so. And so these first several are just not applicable. I've got a button here to get the data. So here's my application running. This big gray area back here is the data grid view. So I'm going to bring in my, my data. I'm going to go find the data file. It's a text file. Open it. And as I open it, it automatically feeds this data grid view because I made the array that is created from the objects of the CMA class. We'll look at the class. So I have an array of CMA class objects and all I do is I set the data source of my grid view to that array and it creates all the columns for me automatically. Now I went through and modified the width of the columns a little bit in code uh, to get this to fit a little bit better. And then anytime you choose one of the years, it's going to show the information down here. So these four lines of information are coming from a method of the CMA class. So let's go take a look at the project. So here I am in my project. And one of the first things I did was I added a, another class. I don't remember how to do that. That is, I right clicked on the solution, went to add, and chose class. And then in the dialog box that comes up, I created a class named CMA.CS and added it to my project. So looking at that CMA.CS code, we get our class CMA. And then inside of that, I created five properties. Year, entertainer, male vocalist, female vocalist, and horizon. Now remember, properties are capitalized. They start with an initial uh, uppercase letter. And we can set these to both read, write, access by providing get and set keywords inside of the curly brackets. That will create the underlying fields for us, but we'll only access the data through the property and not through the fields. So properties for year, entertainer, male vocalist, female vocalist, and horizon. Those are the five fields that we had in our, in our uh, data file. Then I have a constructor. Constructors, of course, are named the same as our class, CMA. I'm going to pass to it an integer, value, an integer value for year, a string for the entertainer, a string for the male vocalist, a string for the female vocalist, and a string for the Horizon Award winner. And I'm going to take the data that's passed to it and simply set those properties to that information. That will create an instance of our CMA awards for that year. Then I simply created another method called show details. It's going to return a string. And all I'm doing here is returning a string of entertainer of the year, concatenating whatever the value of entertainer is, and a new line character. Male vocalist of the year, concatenating male vocalist and a new line character, concatenating to all that. Female vocalist of the year, the female vocalist property, new line character, and I conclude the concatenation with Horizon New Artist Award and the Horizon Award winner. So that is my class, very simple. Let's go take a look at our form. So in the form, I added a 
data grid view, which is this big gray object here. And I gave it a property name. Let me pull my properties over here so we can kind of zoom in a little bit better. I gave the, the data grid view a, a name of DGV for data grid view CMA awards. That really is about the only thing I changed here in terms of the um, properties. Oh, I did change one other thing, and that's select mode. I made a full row select. There's some options here. We can choose cell select. So you can select individual cells. You can select the columns. You can select just the row header that would be on the far left and the column header at the top. So I chose full row select. I think the default was um, cell select. All right, then I added a button, and the name of the button is BTN Get Data. The text, of course, is Get Data. I've got a label here called LBL Year, and I set the font a little bit bigger. And then I've got another label called LBL Details, and I set the font to Courier New, so it would be model-spaced. So things would align very nicely. This label will end up holding four lines of code. I didn't set the auto size to false. I could have. I could have stretched this out, but it'll, it will contract and... and expand nicely based on the data that's being shown. Okay, so that's our interface. Very simple. Four objects. The main thing I coded was the get data button. So let's go into our code. So we're now looking at the code for form one. I did add a using system.io because I'm going to use the open file dialog. And I forgot to mention I did add an open file dialog to the project and I named it OFD CMA. I set the filter to text files and all files. Remember we do the the name of the filter and then the actual wildcard. So it's text files star.txt vertical pipe star.txt. These are done in pairs. And then the all files star.star .star, vertical pipe star.star. .star. I also changed the title here to be Open Awards Data File. And I got rid of the, of the file name. OK, so we have five objects in our interface. Let's go back to the code. So I added the system I.O. so we could access the open file dialog and our stream reader and stream writer. I created an array called awards that is of type CMA. So it's going to contain our CMA objects or instances of our CMA class. I set it to be just one I one record in the array, and I'll show you how to change that based on the amount of data we're bringing in. This binding source I ended up not using. I'm just going to get rid of that. We have our our Form one constructor is created for us. And then I have the BTN get data underscore click events. So that's the clicking of the get data button. And all I do here is I just call it a method called get data. So here is the get data method. I'm going to show the dialog of the, the open file dialog object. So we can get the file we want. We're going to put that file, OFDCMA.file name into a string called data file. And then I use a try catch to open that data file and read from it. And I like to do that in a try catch because sometimes things go wrong. There might be something wrong with the data, the file may be corrupted, um, the file may not exist. So I like to do that in a try catch. So in the try catch we're going to create a stream writer, a stream reader object. We're going to set that stream reader to file.open text in the name of our data file. I have a counter called record count that I'm setting to a minus one. And then in the loop, while sr.peak does not equal minus one, so this is a loop that, that continues to look line by line at the data file until it reaches the end. When it reaches the end, the peak method returns a minus one. So as long as it's not returning a minus one, it means more data to be read. And all I do here is I read each line, and I'm upping record count each time through in reading the line. So that will tell me how many records there are in this data. So I did a minus one on the record count to start with because that very first row of our data file was the header. It contained the words year, entertainer of the year, and so forth. The actual field names that be part of our data. 
I want to ignore that first line. So when I read in the first line, that's line zero. So record count's going to go to zero. And then the records actually start with line two, which would give us a record count of one and so forth. I then close SR and then I reopen it. So now I know how many data lines there are and I can use that information to resize the awards array based on the record count. So oftentimes we don't know how big array we need until we see the data and that data could change from day to day or hour to hour. This allows us to change the array to match the record, match the data, uh, to match the number of records in the data. Remember, when you do this, you have to reference the array. So REF awards. I'm going to read in that first line. That's the the header of the file. I'm going to set IDX counter to zero. It's just an integer. I used IDX for index. This is going to be the index number of our array. And then once again, I'm going to read the array, looking at each line until I hit the, the end of it. So while peak, while sr.peak does not equal minus 1. I'm going to read in each line and split it on that vertical bar that we saw earlier into a string array called temp. The awards.index then, starting with index 0 for the first record, I'm going to populate that with a new instance of CMA, passing it the first item of our temp array that I'm going to convert from a string to an integer, so int.parse temp sub 0, and then the second item, temp sub 1 is our entertainer of the year, temp sub 2 is our male vocalist, temp sub 3 is our female vocalist, and temp sub 4 is the Horizon Award winner. Then I'm going to increment IDX, so that the next time through the loop, we adding to the next element in our array. And then I close. That's how we read the data into an array of the CMA objects. If something goes wrong, then we will get a message box saying uh, title of something went wrong and what the message was of the error. After that, we just need to set up our data grid. And it's as simple as this. The name of my data grid, DGV CMA Awards dot data source and I tell it where the data is coming from. It's coming from my array called awards. And then I also changed the, the width of the columns based on when I first ran this. I wanted the year to be a little bit less. There's not very much data there. So I set it to, to 50. And then all the other columns I widened a little bit and set them to 150. And at the very front of the row is the row header. It shows us kind of which row is selected, which the active row is. It's a very small area needed, so I set it to 25, and that's just the row header's width. That populates our data grid. Now, the thing I wanted to do is when I click or choose a line of information in the data grid, I want to populate this area down here with the details. Now, um, there's no details that we're not showing that's, already, that's not already in the data grid, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you may have other information you want to show based on uh, eliminating some things in the data grid, but showing it down here as far as the details. So I'm going to go back to my code here. So, so in the data grid, I'm put my properties back up over here. In the data grid, in the events, I set up a row enter event called update details. Let's take a look at that code. So this is the remaining code. Update details. We have our sender object. We have data grid view cell event args e. And I'm setting a data grid DGV to data grid view sender. And actually, I was going to say a little bit different. I was going to just pull up the information in the year. I ended up not doing that. So I really don't even need that line anymore. Instead, all I do is get the e.row index. So the, the event args for the data grid view cell has a row index. And I set that equal to an integer named IDX again. And then LBL year.text equals my IDX element of the awards array dot year dot two string, because this year is an integer. And then LBL details dot text equals the IDX element of awards. And I call the show details method from the CMAs.cs file. And that's the returning entertainer of the year and the entertainer, male vocalist of the year, male vocalist, and so forth four lines of information that gets displayed. Let me go ahead and run this. 
So you can again see it running now that you've seen the code. I'm going to get the data. There's my, my text file. I'm going to open it. Populates the array. And sets the array as the data source for the data grid view. And now I can click on any row here and see the information for that year. And I can scroll up and down through here. So this is the little uh, row header width that I changed to 25. The year column is set to 50, and the other three, I, or other four, I set to 150. Obviously, we probably could have made these a little bit less, um, but you can play around with those numbers. There, actually, there is an auto size property for the columns based on the values that are contained in those columns. We'll do more data grid views as we get into working with databases down the end, but I want to introduce data grid view as another way of presenting information in an array, especially when that array contains objects from a class.